What's going on? In this video, I'm going to take you through my tiny studio space here, give you some tips for organizing, and just show you how I have all my camera gear organized and how I work with it for making photos and videos. All right, so this room in total is about seven by 11 feet, but like the actually usable space is more like seven by seven feet. So this is a very, very small studio space and I have quite a bit of camera gear. And so I definitely had some issues getting everything organized and putting it all together. But I think I did a pretty good job. I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. And so I really wanna go through, give you some tips if you have a small space like this and show you how I have everything organized and hopefully inspire you because it's definitely tough having a small space like this, uh, but it's definitely doable and you know, if this is all you have, you can definitely make great use out of it. So hopefully in this video, I'll show you how to give you some tips and hopefully inspire you. All right, before we get into this video, I want to give a huge shout out to Savage Universal for sending me some of their seamless paper backdrops to really help utilize this small studio space. So I have a bunch of them. I have one right here, one right here, and then two leaning up against the wall. Savage Universal's seamless paper backdrops are amazing for, you know, small studio spaces like this or really any studio space because they pretty much roll up out of the way whenever you don't need them. Like I said, I have two rolls right here that are just rolled up leaning against the wall. And then I can switch them out for the ones up here anytime I want. I don't have to have a whole entire wall like painted a certain color, you know, that I can't put anything in front of. I can just roll them up out of the way. And then whenever I need to use them, just roll them down, you know, get the shots, get the photos and videos I need, roll them back up, get them right out of the way. So these are great for any sort of studio spaces. But huge shout out to Savage Universal. Thank you for sending me these. Definitely go check them out down in the description. So anyways, I'm gonna talk more about the backdrop once we get there, but I'm actually gonna start from the front of the room and work my way back. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so like I said, this studio space is super small. Uh, it's about seven by seven feet of actual like usable area. And then the rest over here is pretty much an entrance way, like a coat room area. Uh, so this is the entranceway room of our house that we moved into recently. So this go, this door leads to the outside, this door leads into the house. So there's like coats there, there's a shoe racks. So this space right here pretty much needs to like, you know, be part of the house, like not really a studio space, more just, you know, like I said, like a shoe rack coat room type of area. So only about, you know, here over is what I can actually use for studio space, which is about seven by seven feet which is tiny, like super small. So next to the shoe rack, we have this shelf unit right here. Uh, so this kind of has a majority of like batteries and charging equipment and stuff like that. So on the bottom is kind of like just a junk shelf. You know, there's like a bunch of chargers, camera bags, stuff like that. That's kind of like the junk drawer shelf type of thing. This right here has some sandbags, diffusion fabric, some gloves, um, box, you know, just kind of like junk shelf part two, but kind of more organized. But then once we get up right here, this is the charging station. So I use this shelf specifically for like chargers that I'm using to charge batteries. I kind of have them all plugged into this power strip here. It's definitely nice to have a specific like battery charging location and having everything kind of organized right there with all the chargers for every battery. It's super useful. It makes everything a lot faster than having to find the charger, you know, find a where to plug it in and plug the batteries in, all that stuff. This is just so much easier having a specific dedicated like station unit for it. So we go right up here. These are my batteries. So the two main cameras I use are Sony cameras. So I have these NPF W50 batteries right here, a bunch of those and some other ones in there. And then of course I use my Z cam. So I have all these NPF 970 batteries and stuff, all the NPF batteries in here for the Z cam and for like my lights like those. Um, that's what all those are used for. And then of course my FS7 battery. So this is kind of like my main battery place. These are all the charge batteries. When they're dead, they kind of sit around here until I can charge them, then they go up here. So that's kind of like the battery area for the two main types of batteries I need. And like I said, there's kind of some other random batteries in here as well for other cameras I have, because I have a crap ton of cameras, way too many cameras. But either way, right here, a little drawer. This is like my tools, you know, hex wrenches, um, just random little tool components and stuff. Not a whole lot in there. This one's all step-up rings. I have a bunch of these cheap step-up rings. They aren't the best, but they work fine. So that's what that drawer is dedicated to. Right here, camera straps. Uh, we have some like ball heads, just kind of random equipment right there. And then last but not least, the shelf's kind of empty right now as well, which is nice. But I have my receipt bin. Very important if you run any sort of business, especially photo and video business. A receipt bin, super important to keep track of everything. Keep track of expenses and all that sort of stuff. Then right next to it, I just have my iFootage mini pod. I made a whole video about this. This is seriously one of my favorite pieces of gear. Um, it's just like an awesome little mini tripod. I'll link that video in the description if you want to check it out because this thing is awesome. And that's it for that shelf right there. So that's kind of like, you know, like I said, the main charging battery shelf with a little bit of gear, a little bit of junk. You know, the normal video and photo shelf basically. 
Then right here I keep this light. So I pretty much always have two lights in the studio. So I have this light, which is my key light, and I have this light, which I usually put on the opposite side to, you know, like a fill light or anything like that. And so that just kind of sits there. I can move it around. I usually use my NPF battery so I don't have to plug it into the wall. I can just move it wherever I want. This is a GVM light right here. Pretty simple, you know, just a nice little portable light on the light stand there. Kind of shove it in that corner. And then there's this light right here. This is another GVM light uh, with a Bones mount. I just have an umbrella on it right now. I need to get a soft box, but this just folds up so easy. It's so simple that I've just been using that. However, the thing about this is I actually have it set up in kind of a really interesting makeshift type of way, which is super useful for this space like this. Because of course, if you have a light stand for one of these, you know, you want to like put it up really high, you have the big umbrella on it or a soft box or something, it's going to take up a lot of room, especially in a studio like this. You know, if I have it on that side, it's going to take up a huge amount of space on the floor right there. It'll come up and stick out a bunch. And you know, you're not really even gonna be able to walk in here after that setup. What I did to kind of fix that and get it up out of the way is I made this custom like overhead bar mount rig. I don't even know what I'd call it, um, but these are essentially closet rods. I have two of them 18 inches apart mounted to the wall. And then I have this right here. So I got some like steel L channel, some U bolts, and basically kind of like mounted this thing up here. So it slides around and I can move this light wherever I want in here without it taking up any space on the ground. So I can put it, you know, anywhere from there all the way over here, anywhere in between. This kind of mount light stand thing is on, can move up and down. Of course you can angle and all that. So this is one of the biggest tips I have for you if you have a small studio space. Try to get anything you can up off the ground. Even if it may still use almost the same amount of space, just having it off the ground just makes the space seem so much more open and makes it seem like you're using so much less space even if it's almost the same thing. So I'm not saying build one of these custom closet rod ceiling rigs or anything like that. I'm just saying anything that you can get up off the ground, it's gonna make it seem like such a larger space and make it seem like you can store a lot more stuff in the space. And I'm gonna talk about more stuff that I got up off the ground in a minute, uh, cause that's really the theme with this whole studio. I tried to get everything I could up off the ground. So we had over here, we got tripod right there and then the GVM light case, it's the case for that light right there. I think there might be another one in there actually. That's also hanging on a hook right there to get up off the ground as well. So it's kind of just, you know, tripod storage while there's another hook right there that I have another tripod on or whatever I want to put on it basically. And so that's it for this entire wall right here. Also, I can store stuff up on top of here. So I have this reflector up there right now, but I can pretty much store anything like kind of up on top of here, which is super nice. And so that's that. That's it for this entire wall. You know, as much as I could, I got up off the floor. Of course, the shelf has to be on the floor and the light stand, you know, that's gotta be on the floor as well. Next up, if we kind of go on this side, we have, of course, the door to the house, coats and stuff. Those are actually nice for reducing the echo in here. It helps soak it up, especially in that corner. However, it's still pretty echoey in here. There's nothing on the ceiling. There's nothing really over here. You know, it's really reflective in here. So I wanna try to get that fixed eventually, uh, but that'll be kind of, you know, more down the road. If we get over here, this wall isn't quite utilized yet. However, right here, I have this retractable extension cord so I can use this for anything I want to plug into and I can get it, you know, put the cord along here, down there, something like that, rather than having just an extension cord laying on the ground. This is super useful. It's also on one of these tracks that I built so I can move this around wherever I want, which is super nice. Right now I just have that light plugged into it, but I can pretty much plug anything into this. So if you move over here, I pretty much have these Savage Universal backdrops leaning against this corner right here. It's kind of this little corner right here, which is, you know, kind of weird, but that's there to kind of lean those against. Also extension cord kind of going down there to plug in that because that's a really short cable on this. And that's it for that wall. There's nothing over there either. I might put something there to utilize it more, but nothing right there for now. And so that's it for each side of the walls. Now we pretty much have all of this to talk about. So first of all, the desk. So I got this desk at a thrift store. I put some wheels on it so it can roll around. And then the most recent thing I did was put this piece of plywood on the bottom here so I can store stuff on the bottom of it. So this is super nice. This helps get this stuff out of the way. So right here I have this little bin with a bunch of stuff in it. Those right there, like vinyl tiles that I use for backgrounds and stuff for thumbnails. So it's kind of storage underneath the desk. And of course I can move this around. This is like my main YouTube desk. You know, I put the backdrops and roll them down on it. Uh, I put those vinyl tiles on here for thumbnails and B-roll and stuff. Uh, I sit at it when I make my videos usually, so I'm gonna move that back there, get that out of the way, and then we'll talk about all this. 
So if we start from the top down, up here I have a 86 inch, I believe it is, a black Savage Universal paper seamless backdrop. This literally fits perfect in this room. Like it couldn't fit any better for it to roll down perfectly and pretty much cover the wall completely. I have it out enough so that it goes pretty much right in front of these shelves. So once I push these light stands back and that whole unit right there, I push that back against the wall. This black backdrop will pretty much roll down and cover all of it up completely, which is super nice. Next up, I have this other backdrop right here. This is a yellow one. I have it on a closet rod right now with these light stands. So this is only a 52 inch or 50 something inch, so it's a lot smaller. And I have this here so I can pretty much tuck these light stands back against the wall and kind of push everything behind this huge one back here, which is super nice. I can move these around, I can raise and lower it. You know, these are just kind of like my B-roll backdrops. Um, so I can put different color ones on. I have a white, a blue, and of course a yellow one. So I can roll it down on top of the desk here, get some B-roll, that sort of thing. So that's more portable, you know, a lot simpler to use than that huge one. So every studio space, of course, needs some sort of backdrop, some sort of background like this. So definitely check out the link down in the description, check out Savage Universal's seamless paper backdrops and all the other products. They make super high quality backdrops that I've been using for quite a while now. And they sent me these different colors just to pretty much help complete the studio. And they're amazing. So definitely go check out those down in the description if you're looking for some sort of paper backdrop for B-roll, for photos, portraits, anything like that. They have a bunch of different colors you can use. So next up on the recurring theme of get stuff up off the floor, this is kind of my newest addition right here. So this is like a broom holder thing. I don't know the exact name for it, but it's meant to like hold broomsticks, but it works really, really well for light stands. So pretty much just kind of clip in there. They hold these light stands perfect, that tripod and everything gets up off the floor. Those all used to be kind of bundled in that corner there, just leaned up against that. That didn't look very good, took up a lot of space. Now that they're over here, it looks really good. It holds light stands really well. And I got this like a dollar at a garage sale. So they're really cheap. I think even on Amazon, they're pretty cheap. If I find a cheap one, I'll link it down in the description as well. But they're just super nice for just getting things up off the ground, any sort of light stands or small tripods like this. So then there's these shelves right here. So these shelves are actually wall mounted, so I could have more room on the floor here. So I have these hard cases, camera bags, light bags, all that stuff just kind of gets pushed back there. And it stays even with these shelves. So on the top shelf, I have these drawers right here which just hold more ball heads and, you know, random camera gear. This one has like battery chargers. This one has like filters, stuff like that. So not a whole lot in there. This one I have clamps in here as well as some lens hoods. I have my gimbal system right here just kind of sitting in the middle. Right here I have just a bunch of more random stuff. Uh, I think it's like a CFast card reader, some batteries and some Velcro straps and then just some other like random junk stuff in there. And then the next like three shelves are all pretty much cameras, lenses, and then like lens caps and adapters. I have way too many cameras and lenses here, but that's pretty much where they all go. Not super organized, but just kind of, you know, placed all down there. Not in any sort of order. These are all Canon FD lenses. Those are everything else. That's pretty much the only order they're in. Uh, I got the Z cam, A6000. These are all lens adapters in here, lens caps. Uh, more lens caps. So these are pretty much just all cameras, lenses, adapters, types of shelves right here. Now that's pretty much the entire setup there. Like I said, as much as I can to get off the ground, the better to make it look like there's a lot more space in here, make it look a lot cleaner and more organized and less crowded, especially on the floor. So I use this studio space for all of my B-roll, for my YouTube videos, for photography, product photos. Uh, I've shot a music video against the black backdrop there, which you probably saw some clips already actually. So even being such a small space like this, it still works really well and pretty much gets everything I need done. And so that pretty much wraps up my studio tour. Hope I gave you some tips. Hope this inspired you if you have a really small space like this and you're just not sure if it'll work. It'll definitely work, just go and do it. Try to get everything up off the floor if you can. But again, thanks to Savage Universal. Go check out them down in the description. Definitely hit the like button if you enjoyed this and subscribe to my channel. And that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.